the logging arch, one of the most useful devices you can make. It happily picks up and carries heavy loads where they need to go cleanly and efficiently. I built two sister arches and the boom resided on my 67 Chev and was used as a wrecker. The telescopic aluminum pipe boom, extendable to 16 feet, was even used as a gin pole for pulling our well pump 365 feet down. Eventually it made its way onto the arch. How do you put a 500 pound vintage slipway winch onto your minivan? How do you offload it? And then place the rebuilt piece of local history, well the log arch. Move hemlock tree, that was a problem. Tree tall and close to a building. Well, it helps if you have a beautiful wife to act as the brake man to drop those 200 pound chunks. You need an idiot to go up there and cut it down. And if you're lucky, you got some children to act as chokermen. But in the end, the heavy chunks of hemlock, once again, are moved by the arch. Now the arch is maneuverable, relatively light. The axles slide into receivers in the hubs and with a quick one pin removal, both axles come off with the hubs and tire assemblies. In the center, the arch is bolted together and slips into itself. So the whole arch can be broken down into two pieces right at the peak of the truss at the top all the winches, the boom itself, and the hitch assembly are all done with two inch receivers in mind. So everything can fit everything and can easily be turned 90 degrees to whatever angle you want. Due to the fact that the arch is so long and has such ground clearance and is yet narrow, it is unbelievably easy to maneuver around. It fits in tight places. It will go over almost anything. In this configuration, you can see the arch has only one section of boom. The other section, slung underneath the arch for storage, slips into the boom that's already on the arch to give you the 16 feet. Now, although it was originally designed for picking up logs, anything long and heavy fits right underneath the arch and can be picked up. Here we got 1,500 pounds of 4340 steel and the arch will make short work of that. The fenders pop off they just have one little bolt holding them in and the lights come off with them. They're a pain, but in order to use this on the road, you have to be legal. Now, the arch seems happy to pick up four or 5,000 pounds if the majority of the weight is held under the actual arch and directly above the axles, balancing that as the center point of the mass you're carrying. It keeps all the dirt and the rocks and the pebbles out of the bark of your logs so that when you're sawing them you're not ruining your blades all the time besides being it a far more efficient way to move wood than skidding or dragging I don't have any of the history of the development of the log arch you see them in all different nations from different timelines going back thousands of years. The more modern ones we see are the two-wheeled or two-tracked units pulled behind a skidder or dozer just to lift the front end of the log off the ground so it doesn't hit stumps and get caught up while you're dragging it. Here in the Pacific Northwest, you see them mostly now in fields or as yard art and ornaments the big arches of the past. Sad to see the last days of those big arches fighting their way through the forest, dragging those huge trees behind the skidders. Now, whether you're pulling stumps with blocks that weigh over 200 pounds that need to be placed, you use the arch. You want to move the stumps? 
Well, you use the arch and a quad. Or if the stump's too big, you use the Jeep with the arch. Whatever works. Anything heavy. You have a thousand pound drill press that you've got to move. Use the arch. You got an 85 pound top weight power hammer. Well, you use the arch for that too. Do you got a 30 foot length of six inch pipe on top of your minivan that needs to come off? Did 120 feet of railway track follow you home and now needs to be offloaded? There's always gears to be moved around. Maybe you want a steel gate with an arch and it needs to be 16 feet off the ground. You can use the arch. You can always do some rock landscaping. This unit makes your wife's cast off minivan an earth mover. There seems to be no end to what it'll move. So you can see here, nothing terribly special. Safety chains and a standard hook up into a very thick well two inch square. Where it changes a little bit is here. It's done on a pivot, goes into round pipe into the square receiver. Now I do have square so that it'll stay exactly true to the arch. But where this is handy is if you're using it with a quad and you're worried that the arch is going to roll over and rather than flipping your quad um, it will be allowed to pivot. What it also does is if I've got a heavy load that I'm transporting for some distance I can flip the hitch upside down, flip the tongue upside down so that the tongue load that's pulling up on the Jeep is still being used properly on the trailer hitch assembly. And once again, everything with two inch square tubing so that you can adapt and modify and butcher almost anything. That's the telescopic boom, which just sort of hangs underneath. Great big eyes everywhere, so you can hook rigging of all sorts to anywhere. The log dog, which is normally where the log would be pulled up into, can be adjusted up and down on a pin assembly. The winch is also sits on a pin assembly. It does have a pulley shiv assembly that can be hooked in anywhere. And everything just sort of fits into everything else. The wires for the boom, which can be also used for connecting around the log to pull it up into the arch if you're towing underneath. Supports. The fender attachment points or whatever you're going to use those for. Here you can tell it's the arch is completely supported and trussed underneath which also gives more rigging points to utilize. More rigging points along the back to hang jewelry, which is really what ends up being there all the time, which is quite nice, as you don't have to really put stuff away, it can just hang there. Now, as the boom was a thought that came after the afterthought, it's kind of a weird attachment. It pins in, in the bottom and in the top. And then the saddle, where the boom normally sits if the wire isn't actually lifting the boom and you're just letting it sit in the cradle. It can be pinned wherever you like, but I usually just leave it right there and that seems to work well. Nothing fancy here, except that square unit there that must have come off a fish boat. We used to have a lot of a fishing industry here on the coast. And, well, the wreckers used to have quite a bit of stuff from them, which was quite nice. I guess the only other thing to look at is the attachments for the axles. So there's just a half inch bolt that you pull out and the axles just pop out, which makes it that much easier to transport. Not that this one goes anywhere and now that I have one on the island, the sister ship, there's not much reason. And the wiring stays on the frame.
so that if you put the fenders on, the lights are on, and off you go. And of course, there's where the come along sits for pulling up the front end of the log. So she'll happily transport 20 foot logs. And, uh, and whatever else you need to put around in the yard. So that's the logging arch. All bent with one of those Princess Auto or Power Fist, or you guys have them down in the States. I can't remember their name, but it's a cheap import farmer tool store. One of those pipe benders will bend three inch schedule 40 pipe, which is what this is made out of. It does crinkle the tight 90 degrees and it is tough to bend, but the 16 ton bender will do it. And it crinkles it a little bit, but it's all good. So there it is, the logging arch.